Hello boys and girls, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. I am your host and guide, Chris13. Now, you might be wondering what we're doing up here by what looks like the Opera House, sort of. Well, it's not the Opera House for one, it's actually the Colosseum. Remember that crazy guy who was up here, north of Colingdon, back in the World of Balance? Well, he actually managed to complete it. And... We're gonna be checking it out. Now, since we got the airship, there's actually a few things that we can do, you know? Um, this game becomes very open-ended at this part, point. We were told to go to Miranda so that we could pick up... Well, I'm pretty sure they told us that we could go get Cyan there. Yeah, there was a guy who kept calling everyone sir who went to Miranda. Um, you can also basically travel to any town now and buy whatever weapons and armor you want that are for sale. Now you go to some of them, they're going to be expensive and whatnot. I, however, I'm not going to be doing that right now because I don't feel like it's necessary. You basically get enough good weapons and armor from traveling through dungeons. And the ones that you buy are all going to have really high defense ratings but aren't necessarily going to be the best that you can get. There are... Hmm... Um... Yeah, so at this point in the game, you can basically break off and do it in whatever order you want. Um, remember, flying around, there is a chance we'll fight that Esper that's up here. And so you gotta be careful of that. Anyways, um... I actually decided to take my plane, because there's a few things I wanted to point out. I actually went back here, and I picked up another one of those, uh auto death darts for Setzer, because I'm about to use them, and then back to Tsen, which is this town here, you can see it on the map, and we've been here earlier, it was where we got Sabin, and I bought two Flame Claws and two Poison Knuckles, and now I'm heading back to the Colosseum, and you'll see why I bought those in a second, and I'll explain how the Colosseum works. This is one of the few things that I'm going to be doing that I'm going to be coming back to it every now and then, I don't know if I'm going to show it every single time, because it's kind of boring. Boring to watch, boring to play. Anyways, Coliseum at the Dragon's Head! Yeah, Dragon's Head Coliseum, or Dragon Net Coliseum, or whatever you want to call it. Um, for those who don't realize why it's called that, well, look at the island. It's kind of shaped like a dragon, like it's got a wing, and we're definitely up in its head. You can see it's like mouth. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Kind of like the Serpent Trends actually now looks like a snake and so on and so forth. Hmm. Bed items, win items... Valuable items? You get even more valuable items? Oh, that sounds awesome. And yeah, Ultros is now a receptionist. So... He's not a bad guy anymore. And yeah, one-on-one -on -one and automatic. Um, that's something that kind of sucks. And hey, you're an Imperial soldier, an only surviving one. Gave some information to a friend wearing a bandana? Hey, we know a guy who wears a bandana. Talk to the Emperor twice. Was the hint you gave him on finding the location of Emperor Gastra's treasure? I don't know what it means yourself, but okay, sure, whatever. <gasps> Siegfried! Huh. Hmm, someone impersonating him. Anyways, the reason he's here is because you can actually fight him in the Colosseum. And, uh, I'll get to that when we get to it. We're not gonna be fighting him yet, because, man, is he powerful. Um, there's an inn, so you can sleep up. And you see, that's how Orthros got a desk job. Haha, <laughs> I should have his debt paid off in like a hundred years or so. I love how that line always gets reused. Uh, okay. Anyways, the Colosseum, how it works, is you pick an item from your inventory, so a potion, whatever you want. And you bet it. And then you pick a character. And that character goes one-on-one -on -one versus an enemy. And now it'll always be the same enemy that you fight for the item that you bet. You know what? We'll, we'll explain it while we're doing it. Setzer, dice, diamond shield. Well, I guess I could have gone double dice. I don't think it's necessary, but... What have we got for accessories? Right now, let's remove everything from everyone we're not using. Just so I know where they all are. Black belt, and, um... And 
we won't really do anything. That won't do anything. What can we give him? Okay, evade will work for this battle. Sort of. Kind of. Black Belt might work. Anyways. Will I enter it? Yes! Okay. The way it works is, you pick an item. Say I pick something stupid like a potion. I have a chance of getting an elixir. All I have to do is beat Typhon there. Now, you bet a potion you're winning elixir. That sounds amazing. However, first off, good luck getting this to happen. We'll pick anyone. Now, when you enter... Yeah, see? Whenever you fight, well, before I explain anything, whenever you fight Typhon, don't even bother about it, because he'll just use Sneeze, and you have to be able to beat him before he does that. Otherwise, well, you just get knocked out of the battle. One thing that's good about Sneeze is you don't lose your item. Now, the way it works is you bet your item, say it was the potion, whether we win or lose the battle, you lose that item, so you will lose the potion. However, if you lose, you get nothing. If you win, you get the item that it says you would win. So, the elixir, should we have won that? The battles are automatic. You have no control of your character. It's as if they're confused, so they can still use their abilities. They will randomly cast any magic that they know. So sometimes going in here with less known magic can actually be beneficial because they'll only use the ones that they currently know so you can kind of control which magic spells they'll cast um, and they'll use their attack now let's go in there we'll we'll start with something small let's start with a uh, we've already shown that we can't get anything if we bet the potion let's try phoenix down okay we fight whatever the hell they want to call him, it's a Cactrot, and you can win Magirocks. So Magicite, so if you want some Magicite, go for it. Um, I don't use Magicite, but I'm going to show you how to win this battle. Anyways, uh, Cactrots have a really high defense, as you know, from any game. Basically, everything you do is going to deal them one damage. They only have about 10 health, but they can deal a thousand damage per attack with their... Um, thousand Needles. And now, if the battle actually lasts 10 rounds against a Cactrot, they'll use a thing called 10,000 Needles, which wasn't actually out in this game yet, because you can't deal 10,000 damage, you know, you can't deal over 9,999, so they'll actually use 1,000 Needles 10 times in a row. So to beat them, because of their giant evade, you need an attack that, one, is pretty much guaranteed to hit, and two, is going to ignore defense. So Setzer's Dice will work wonderfully here. Now like I said, we go in, and we have no control. Oh, done. Use the dice right away. Easy. And we get the match site. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now if you'll just excuse me, I'm gonna go outside and save up. Alright. All saved up. Now I'm gonna show off some of the tougher battles. The match site's very easy. That's kind of like a joke. If you want the Magicite, you can kill that Cactrot. That was just something I wanted to show to explain it. That is an item that some people actually really like, because, like I said, it summons a random Esper, so it can be really good. Um, there's no harm in using it, and especially because you can get them for basically the price of a Phoenix down, why not? Anyways, the next enemy we're going to fight, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go Black Belt, and I'm going to go Genji Glove. Because I want Setzer to have two weapons. And I'm going to give him two intense darts. Right? Because these are the ones that use auto-death. Is this what I want to do right now? Yes. And, um... What I'm going to bet is I'm going to bet one of my ribbons. Whoops, didn't mean to cancel out. For some reason I thought I was like in an item menu and I can go and arrange it and I got kind of felt OCD when I saw the hole there. But anyways, um, if you decide you don't want your ribbon anymore, you can actually wager it here. 
Now, I suggest if you only have the one, keeping it around, because it is a good item. What I did is there's a really, really powerful enemy you can fight on the world map, and I'm not showing it because he will basically destroy you. Um, it's a Brachiosaurus, and it has the ability to cast, like, Ultima, Earthquakes, and it's basically the strongest random enemy you can fight at this point in the game, and it's the one that you grind off of at the very end of the game. Um, later you can steal ribbons from them. But I got my second one by going back to South Figaro, because I realized I missed one there. Um, you know what? I should probably actually show how I got that. You know what? I'm actually going to cut in where I got that, because I don't know why I didn't. I totally skipped getting it, so uh, this is how you get it. Okay, um, anyways, that showed where you can get the second ribbon. I honestly, I don't know why I completely forgot about it at the beginning of the game. Like, it, whew, right over my head. Anyways, um, actually I guess it probably, it's not really necessary at the beginning of the game. It's a lot easier to go back and get now, because those enemies can be kind of difficult the first time you go through there, because you run short on magic and you don't have tons of healing. But, let's wager it and hope for the best now. Setzer, please do this. Come on. All right, he's not hurting us. This is this is so far so good. But unfortunately, Setzer is casting magic. What we need to happen is we need Setzer to use his regular attack. And with that regular attack, we need one of those darts to use its auto death. Oh, come on, Setzer, cut it out. Don't do this. Please don't do this to me, Blizzara. Come on. As you can see, with the amount of damage I'm dealing, and the way he can heal himself with his... White Wind... If sets... Come on. Come on. No. Come on. Come on. No! Double no! Ah! No, this is... Okay, come on. We have to live this. Because if we lose here, we lose the ribbon. Which is why I made sure to save it. Damn it! Come on! Come on! Come on! No! 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 Aw, oh, damn, we lost. Ah, oh, crap. Well, we lost a ribbon, so. That sucks. I'm gonna reload. Balls. Okay, let's try this a second time. If this doesn't work, I'm going to cut to when I finally do beat him. So, we're not going to sit here for hours and hours trying to win. Anyways, like I said, all we need is one auto-death. There we go. Hey, look at that. Second attempt. And we got a gold hairpin. So, gold hairpin. Not a great accessory. Remember how I said we didn't really want it before? Well... Because I wanted to get Mog. Well, now that we do have it... You can see what it does. Raises... Gale Hairpin? That's not what I... Just one? Gold Hairpin, there we go. Reduces MP consumption to half normal. Anyone can use it, and what it does is it allows you to cast your magics for half the MP cost. Great, but honestly, how often have we been running out of MP? When you can give yourself an earring and kill people faster? And at the beginning of the game, you can get it, 
Um, if you don't get Mog at the beginning there and he falls, you can actually still get him later. So you don't lose out on a character. However, you won't be able to get him again in the World of Balance, so you lose out on the Water Rondo. And because I just wanted to show off how to get everything, so I figured I might as well show off how to get the Water Rondo and all his other dances, I decided to skip on the Gold Hairpin. So I had to give up one of my... Unfortunately, had to give up one of my ribbons in order to get it. Anyways, all we're going to do with it is we're just going to rebed it. So if you allow me to just go outside and save again... Okay, so, now that I've saved up, we're going to try again for the second Colosseum battle. And for this one, we're going to be using Savin. What we're going to want to equip on him is he's going to want the ribbon, right? You're going to want to make sure you have two, because you're going to want a ribbon for this battle. You do not want status ailments. And we're going to give him the Genji Glove. With the Genji Glove, we're going to go dual Burning Knuckles. Now, the Burning Knuckles might be weaker, but the reason we're going with two of them is because the enemy we're going to fight is weak against fire, so they'll be dealing more damage, plus with their chance of casting fire after attacking, the fire will be dealing more damage as well. And, of course, we're going to be getting bedding the Gold Hairpin. Now remember, you don't have to do these all now, you can come back when you're stronger, but I think we might be able to win this one now. Right? And we're going to fight a Great Morble, or, you know, the Great Malboro, or whatever you want to call him. Um, which is basically like the Mad Oscar we were fighting in Daryl's Tomb, but it's stronger, and its bad breath causes even more status ailments, which is why you're going to want to make sure you have the two ribbons, so if you bet one, you can still get the other one. There are other ways to get the gold hairpin, but honestly, the battle with the uh, betting the ribbon is probably the easiest, and you can steal the ribbons later, so you can get these, but I really want this dragon horn now, because it is good. So, with my fingers crossed... Okay, let's try this again. Yes, we are going to enter. This may take a while, because I totally forgot that it has sneeze. Where's my gold hair? There it is. Yeah, see, when you they cast sneeze, you don't actually lose your item, you just leave the battle. So, let's, let's try this again, and let's hope for the best. Seriously, Sabin? Seriously? That's gonna do nothing. Seriously, Great Malboro? Seriously, that's going to do nothing. I have a ribbon. Damn it. Alright, so now we get to sit back and watch as he casts a whole bunch of... Oh my god! It worked! Oh man, now he's just super weak. I don't think his sneeze or anything will work. I think we got this. Oh man, knock on wood. Oh. Whoa, wait, they absorb holy? That is crazy. Alright, well, we didn't get any fire from that, but at least we got some damage on him, finally. Another thing I'm going to mention is you can actually use run in these battles, and uh, you can't actually run away, but by doing this, it will stop your characters from attacking. So if you're fighting an enemy that can't hurt you for whatever reason, and you've poisoned them, sometimes it's best to just sit there like that and let the poison wear them off because your attacks, as you saw with Sabins or Blast, have a chance of healing them. However, this Malboro isn't poisoned, we're just slowly dwindling away his health. And we got a flying dragon horn. That is awesome! This is an even better accessory. This one is going on Edgar once we leave this place. Causes the jump command to become continuous. Okay? So, when I first played the game, I was like, causes jump to become continuous? I don't even use jump, so why would I want to... 
just have him constantly keep jumping. I thought it basically just made him berserked and jumped. No. What it does is when you use jump, it's like giving him X attack from like other games or something like that. Or like two weapons. He'll jump and he'll come down on the enemy twice. Or three times or possibly even four times. So you use one jump attack and now he's attacking twice with his weapon. And therefore it's basically doubled the damage the jump attack does. Doubled to quadrupled the damage jump attack does. Which means our dragoons, this is where they start to shine. Okay, there are a few other items I want to get. So, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to save, because if you noticed, I'm saving between each one, because I don't want to lose any of my items. And, uh, you know what, I'll show you how to get them too, because there are some pretty good weapons we can get. Okay, the first one is going to use the same setup we had last time, and we are going to bet one of our flame tongues. Right? We're going to fight the exactly same enemy. However, should we win, this time we're going to get an Ogre Nyx. So, let's try it again and hope for the best. Um, if this battle... If I lose this battle, I'm just going to cut it because you don't need to see me fight the same enemy. But if I manage to win this, then... Awesome! We see a winning one. Um, so... Actually, you know what? Because this is going to go on for a while, I'm going to find some way to just get to the end where we win it, okay? So I'll see you guys there. Okay, so we finally did it. We got the Ogre Nyx. Now this, as you can see from the description, is actually a weapon. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna give this to Celeste. Okay. Do I want to? Uh, I can. You know what? I'm actually not going to. I thought I was, but it lowers her magic, so I don't want to. Quite a bit, and her magic evade. Um, what this weapon is good for... Say you had, actually, Edgar. We were, instead of making him a Dragoon, we were gonna have him use his tools. So, a character who can equip this, who does not use physical attacks, is going to want this. Uses MP to perform critical hits. However, if you're unlucky, it will break. Only Terra, Edgar, and Celeste can use this weapon. Now, the reason you would give it to a character who doesn't use physicals is you would give it to them, and then you would give them the black belt so they would counter with it. It only has a chance of breaking when you use your fight command. So if they counter with it, it won't. So that's a good way of, you know, using it, because it is an upgrade in your weapon right now, and having it last. But we have one more enemy left to face, so let me save up one more time. And okay. Unfortunately, you've noticed we've... Seven's kind of hurt. I don't... I'm going to test something here. And we're going to attempt the next battle. And I'm not going to cure up, because I don't remember if you heal or not from these battles. I think you do, because I've just gotten it a bunch and I never healed up, but... We'll find out. Anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to give him still the Genji Glove. Um, and we're going to give him the Black Belt, so we can try and get a few more hits off. However, we're going to give him now the Dark Claw. The weakest of all the claws we got right now, but the one that's going to be strong against the enemy. Uh, for you, that would be the Poison Claw. And we are going to wager... the Murasame. And in return, you'll get the Masamune. Um, for the American... Um, players, what you're actually wagering is a weapon called the Aura, and in exchange... Sorry, you're, um, uh, you're wagering the, uh, Murasame, and you'll be getting the, uh, a weapon called the Aura. 
which was just the Masamune um, mistranslated, or they didn't have enough space or whatever. So, let's... One last battle, guys. One last battle. Oh, dear. Oh, crap. Come on, we can do this. Sabin, just hit him a few more times and no more missing. Ouch, that hurts. Come on. No, 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 no misses. All right, yes. Hits. Hits are good. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a hit, it's good. Ah, oh, well, fudge crackers. Well, okay, you know what? One more time, I'm gonna be reloading, and I'll see you guys when I win the weapon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, that took way too long. Sorry, I actually meant to show those battles, but each of them I attempted so many times before I finally won, I'd usually... I was just giving up on the whole recording, because it was, oh my god, my files were huge. Like, that guy was actually just near impossible to beat. I really shouldn't have been doing that right now, because it's not like I even need the weapon. And that last guy just, oh my god, he just kept casting Sneeze, and oh, this has taken forever. Anyways, there's a few other things I want to grab before going on. Now, as I said, we can go and do things in any order we want, but I figured we might as well at least continue with the planned order of the game. There's no point in kind of, you know, detouring from it if I'm showing it all anyways. I might switch it up later, depending on how I'm feeling, and go grab characters that I like and want to use. But for now, we were told to go get Cyan, so... Oh, uh, well, even if I'm not gonna use the poor bastard, I'm gonna go get him. I'll see you guys next time. Till then. <laughs>